guys, happy Soul Sister Saturday. This is Dana here to share with you some information, support and advice on your path to life. It's been an awesome week connecting with some of you. I did the first ever Skype call with our fans. It was so amazing to hear how many of you really like the show and to just see and experience how much it impacted you. Okay guys, here, um, let's see. My parents recently got divorced and I've been living with my dad for the past few weeks and I haven't seen my mom in two weeks. I feel as though my dad is forbidding us to see her. I really miss her and I can only call her. I don't want to live just at my dad's house, but that's what's happening and I feel sad and stressed out. To make it worse, every one of my friends are avoiding me and I don't know what is happening. I need your help. Well, I bet one in two of you know what this feels like. Divorce is so hard for kids because the parents a lot of times aren't really emotionally mature enough to handle it in like a peaceful way. And I remember growing up, my stepfather used to like talk really bad about my biological father and, and his other son, so my half brother. He used to like, he used to just kind of joke around about them and just say things like, my father, my biological father was really, really rich and we were really poor and he didn't pay child support. So my stepfather raised us without a dime from my rich biological father. And we used to see him once a year and he wasn't very nice. I was laying in bed thinking about this this morning, actually. Like I can remember how bad my stepfather would make us feel when we went to see him, my biological father. And oh, the whole time I was there, I felt guilty. The whole time I was with my biological father, it affected the whole relationship so profoundly because my stepfather was insecure, I think, because he didn't have, he was a mechanic. He was a poor mechanic. And my biological father had, was a business owner, very wealthy electrician. And so, you know, it, it was this really painful dynamic for everybody, but I'll tell you, it affected the rest of my life in a relationship with my bi biological father. Now, my biological father isn't a nice man. <laughs> he's an alcoholic and he's abusive. So I know on the one hand, my stepfather was right. However, I would have liked to have had the freedom to make that judgment call myself. So he would make me feel bad when I'd come home after a visit with my biological father and he would say things that made me feel awful. Like, oh, I bet you loved it there. Did you get lots of toys because he's so rich? and it was so excruciatingly painful. I like became who I wasn't just to please my stepfather and be loved by him. I was stuck in this dynamic of wanting to love both my stepfather and my biological father, but my stepfather made it um, really difficult because I felt like he would reject me if that was the case. The same kind of thing happens in these situations. And again, it's just so, so hard to be able to help kids with this because parents are kind of needing to heal. You know, just because we're adults, just because your parents are adults and we're adults does not mean we have anything figured out. I feel exactly the same emotionally on some levels now as I did when I was a child. Your soul doesn't really age. You're always just that person. When you're sad and stressed out, your friends just naturally avoid you. It's science and let me tell you why. When you're on a vibration, or you're, which is a feeling, so when you're on a feeling of negativity, depression, and sadness, your friends are naturally going to repel from that. It's not their fault. It's just, it's hard to be around somebody else's sadness. It's hard to hold the space for someone else's depression and to be there if you're going through hard times yourself. You know, I've helped a lot of people, a lot of good friends. And if I was in a sad, depressed place, I couldn't help them. I couldn't even be connected with them until I healed or I kind of get over what I was working through myself. So the fact that your friends are avoiding you, don't take that on too much. You probably have been a depressing person to be around. I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm being honest. It's not your fault. Of course you're going to be a depressed person after going through this. But I'm just saying like a lot of people have a really hard time in supporting someone else through their pain because it triggers their own pain. Sometimes people avoid friends who are sad and depressed because it triggers their own sadness so much. And standing in that space of someone else going through trauma or having a hard time is really painful for a lot of people, so they avoid it. It's not because they don't like you personally, it's the way that they feel around you is really overwhelming. Please forgive your friends for just being where they're at. They're not purposefully avoiding you. Things are hard in your life, and maybe you have one or two good friends that could help you through it, or maybe you just have me. And in that case, I'm glad to be here for you to tell you that sometimes we need to be alone. Sometimes we have to sit in our pain, and sometimes we have to just process the pain. Now, feeling pain after a divorce is really normal. You are supposed to feel depressed. Who wouldn't? Your parents are supposed to, by nature, feel depressed right now. But there's too many people right now telling you that you shouldn't feel that way. You know how many kids are put on like medication because they're sad and they think it's gonna be the answer? The parents just, like, my daughter's so sad and 
she's not doing this or she's not doing that. And then they put kids on medication and drugs just to avoid the sadness. Well, that makes things 10 times worse. So if you're in that situation, your sadness, of course, is normal and your sadness is healthy in this situation and you got to sit in your pain. I encourage you just to sit in a space where you can just be alone and feel the pain. Feel it in your body. Don't try to run from it. You can handle it. Pain and sadness and depression aren't stronger than you because they are you. You are human. I feel it too sometimes, guys. I do. I haven't got it all figured out. I've been alive a lot longer and I've gone through a lot to give me experience. But the truth is I feel the same kind of pain you guys do. Um, I feel the same kind of pain that I haven't talked to my biological father in seven years. Um, but I really know that it's not about me anymore. It's about my kids and I don't want them around abuse and alcoholism and all these sad things. So it's a conscious choice not to be involved in his life, for example. Life is complicated, sweeties. <laughs> it is. And when divorce comes to play, and you know what? We all have our story. One in two kids have divorced parents. That's the way it is. Um, you just need to know that it's nothing you did, it's not your fault. I'm sure you've heard all this before. I don't mean to sound totally cliche by saying it's not your fault, but it's not. And of course you're sad, and I hope you can be able to express to your parents how you feel, and really to talk to your dad. I think right now when, when everyone's in so much pain, and you really want to approach your father and say, I really want to see my mom, you're so afraid he's going to reject you too. The fear that is guiding you right now is never going to guide you in the right direction as to what to do. So listen, listen guys, open up, open your ears, listen to this, okay? If you are making decisions based on fear, they're, you're never gonna get the right answer. You have to get clear. If you're fearful and therefore searching for an answer, when you're on that vibration of fear, the healthy right answer will not come. You first need to sit in your pain you need to process it, you need to think about it, you need to cry. Nothing's wrong with you because you're crying into your pillow. The shower is a great place to cry. That's where I do my crying is the shower. Something about it just releases so much for me. I'll stand in the shower and I'll cry and just like let it all out. If you bottle it in because you're afraid of being rejected, it's only going to hurt you on the inside and it just manifests into really awful um, things in life. So. You're supposed to feel pain when your parents get divorced. You're supposed to have all these emotions. But I would just really tell your dad how you feel. If your parents know how you really feel, and learning to talk to them is hard if you've been living in a certain dynamic with them, I realize. But just saying to your dad, like, I love you so much, dad, but I'm really missing mom. You know, I really would love to know that I can go see her without it hurting you. You know, tell him your fears, dad. I'm so afraid that if I see mom, you're going to get mad at me and reject me. If you tell him that, it's going to shift a lot within him and you. Authenticity and honesty are the only way. You never have to manipulate to get what you want. Just be honest. But it's hard, isn't it? Like when you think about saying that, you're like, oh God, I've never talked to him like that. The truth is you need to, to be able to find your own peace and joy. So never, ever worry about laying your fears on the table. If you're afraid of something, you just have to barf it out and tell the people that you're with that you're afraid of it. Because if you don't, the truth will always come out eventually. You're going to warp the whole situation. You're going to get everybody mad at you. Exactly what you're fearing will come true from not being honest about your fear. So you go, hey, dad, I love you so much. Give him a hug. I'm, I'm just feeling really afraid that you're going to reject me if I go see mom. I love you both so much. And just like sit in that discomfort. He's going to be a little uncomfortable too. He can't get mad at you for your feelings, sweetie. So... If you're making decisions based on fear, it's never the right direction. You've got to get clear, feel the negative feelings, and then work through them, and then come from an honest, authentic place in communication with everybody, be it your friends, your parents, or your teachers, and that will never lead you wrong. I have time for one more question. This one says, can you talk about peer pressure in the popular group? Oh, the popular group. I remember it well. I remember sitting at the cafeteria table at school alone, looking over at the table that just seemed like it had all the fun and all the cool people were there. They were all laughing and joking and, you know, being silly. And I just remember looking over partially with envy and partially with disgust. I hated them, but I wanted to be them. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Do you guys ever get caught in that like weird dynamic where you're like, okay, I hate them, but I want to be them. Um, that's normal again through your whole life. Even as an adult, you're going to see like the popular moms. 
I used to go to library story hour, you know, 10 years ago when Devin was a little toddler and I'd be sitting at library story hour. I'd look over at a group of moms, you know, they'd all be laughing and joking and they'd be showing each other their new shoes or whatever. And I was alone and looking over at these like popular, cool looking moms and thinking to myself like, wow, it'd be really cool to have that many friends, you know, like I wonder what that would be like. And we all live with that until we don't. And when don't we? When we realize that we're all we need. You are all you need and you are everything you've been looking for is within you. It's always an inside job. And all these, all these things you're chasing to be are already within you and you just have to learn to activate them and trigger them and allow them to come forth. When I gained self-confidence, people wanted to be my friend. When you're not looking for somebody else to make you happy, when you're not looking for something outside yourself to make you happy, you find happiness in a way that most people never live. So the people that you're looking at, that you're thinking are really cool and popular, you have to know the truth that they are in just as much pain, if not more, than you are. Um, there's, there's, uh, there's pros and cons to every dynamic, whether you're a loner and have no friends, and whether you have a billion friends and you're so popular, you are no different. You are all people dealing with the same emotions, and oftentimes those popular kids are the ones burying the most. The popular kids when I was in high school are the ones that are either dead now, alcoholic, divorced, uh, working at a small dead-end job, and the ones that were alone and didn't seem very popular, whether it was the nerdy kids or you know the kids that were in band or all the kids that are looked down on are the ones that are extreme powerful successes in life. If you can just know in your heart that you, what you think is not reality, that you think that these people have it all figured out and they must have it all. They must have it all, but they don't. None of them do. They all have their own stories. They all have their own pain. People bury all kinds of abuses behind a popular front all the time. And whether it's a abuse, a alcoholic parent, sexual abuse, um, hiding behind a popular front is really common. So if you can look at these people that you are seeing as popular and you wish so much you were them, you have to know that the pain that they're feeling is no different than the pain that you're feeling. These aren't people that never experience what you feel. They're people that experience it, but then feel like they have to hide it because they're upholding some kind of image. That's even worse. So you look at these kids and you just send them empathy and love if you can, instead of getting resentful or jealous. Because we are all human. We are all going through the same types of struggles in life where our stories are all unfolding. You never know somebody else's situation. The people that appear the most popular and put together are usually the ones that are the total opposite. I'm breaking down a lot of illusions for you in this episode of Soul Sisterhood. For all of you part of our soul tribe, boys and girls, you guys are perfect and whole the way that you are. So whether you're somebody sitting at the cafeteria table alone at school, or whether you're somebody that everybody adores and holds to the highest standards and you feel like you don't want to let anyone down, the most popular kids and the most unpopular kids are all watching this video. You all know who you are and you all experience the same level of deep pain and suffering as the next person. And you're all capable of experiencing the best bliss and happiness and success and growth as the next person. So the next time you walk by some of the popular kids, you smile and you hold your head high and ask how they are. Don't hold resentment and anger. Like break down the walls and know that the state that you're in right now is only temporary. It's going to go by like a blink. Before you know it, you're going to be madly in love and in a relationship and you're going to be moving out of the house. And then the next stage is when you find out you're pregnant for the first time. And then you're going to give birth and you're going to be holding your baby for the first time. And your lives have only just begun. And life can be amazing and beautiful and awesome when you know the truth of all these false illusions that people build up around you. And I'm here to help you discover those and understand those. So guys, I'm going to end this solo sister video right now, but I just had to connect and make this video to tell you that I'm feeling so much happiness and gratitude that you guys reach out to me and that you trust me to give you this information. So again, take what works and leave the rest. Hey guys, well, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Soul Sister Saturday. Love you.